Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkle Zunky. So today I have a quest requirements and rewards guide and basically in this guide I'm going to be showing you some of the best quests in all of RS that you can do to unlock specific things in game that are really going to help you out. So whether you're working towards grinding the 270 quest points required for Walgothic Sleeps and eventually Ritual of the Madra and you're working towards finishing your quests and you're getting your quest cape or whether you just want to unlock some cool stuff in game that's really going to help you out, here's a list of some quests that you should be prioritizing and that are going to help you access new areas and unlock new transportation systems and a whole bunch of healthful stuff throughout your RS journey. So the first quest I'd really recommend for you guys to do, uh, in terms of difficulty, these quests are scaling in terms of difficulty, but the first one up on the list is Smoking Kills, and what Smoking Kills unlocks is you get the full amount of Slayer points instead of getting reduced Slayer points. You also unlock the Simona Slayer Master, which is the next best master before Duradel, and also you can kill monsters in the Pollen of Niche Slayer Dungeon. The next quest up here is My Arms Big Adventure. The cool thing about My Arms Big Adventure is you get a disease-free herb patch, so during those herb runs, you can teleport to Trollheim, harvest the patch there, and the cool thing about it is your herbs will never die. The next quest is King's Ransom. The reward that you get from King's Ransom is Piety, Augury, and Rigor, which are the best prayers for boosting your stats before Turmoil, and obviously Turmoil has a level 95 prayer requirement, also a lot of quest requirements, so it's a bit hard to unlock, so before you get Turmoil, that's the next best thing. The next quest here is Fairy Tale Part 2. You don't actually have to complete Fairy Tale Part 2 to unlock Fairy Ring Transportation. However, it is a fairly short quest, and it unlocks a lot of future quests that are pretty cool, including Fairy Tale Part 3, which means you can do Fairy Rings without even the use of a Draymond Staff. The next quest is uh, Throne of Miscellanea. The rewards from this are Kingdom Management, which aren't nearly as good as they used to be, but still, once you complete Throne of Miscellanea and the quest after it called the Royal Trouble, you can earn about a free 150k a day without having to do hardly any work at all, so I'd recommend getting that done. The next quest up here is Lunar Diplomacy, and Lunar Diplomacy, along with the quest after it, Dream Mentor, unlocks access to the Lunar Spells. You can also access the Lunar Island, which is where all the cool PVMers bank after PVM trips. Up next is Summer's End. The reward from this also, again, is a reward that not, isn't quite as good as it used to be back in the day, but you do unlock Corporal Beast, and you also unlock the Corporal Beast Telly on the game's necklace, which is very useful for warbands and stuff like that. Next quest up here is Edgar's Ruse, which is an incredibly useful quest, a very underrated one, because you get the Trollheim teleport, and trust me, when you do Slayer and PVM, you're going to be teleporting to God Wars all the time. And this teleport saves you an extremely, extremely long run from Birth Orb, so it's a must-do quest. Up next is Regicide, which gives you access to the Elflands. Also gives you access to the City of Letya, which gives you another Fruit Tree Patch, which is very useful if you're doing those farm runs. So it's important to get this one out of the way as soon as possible, also with the Elf City rework coming up soon. It gives you access to the area for that as well. Up next is Monkey Madness, which gives you access to Apatol. And also the access to the Apatol Agility course once you get your hands on a Ninja Monkey Grigri, which is the best way to train agility up until you can access the Advanced Numb course. Up next is Branches of Dark Mare, which unlocks Draken's Medallion, which has some of the most useful teleports in the entire game, including teleports to Barrows, which means it makes it extremely fast to bank, and also teleports all around Mauritania, which without this medallion are very annoying to get to. Up next is Temple of Sense Descent, and of course we all know the rewards for this one, Ancient Curses. If you have 95 prayer, you can now use the Turmoil Curse and also 92 prayer, the Soul Split Curse, one of the most useful unlocks in the entire game. Obviously, you still have to train your prayer. You don't get those right away, but you have to do the quest as well. And then we have King of the Dwarves, which unlocks the Lava Flow Mine, which is a very great way to train mining up until about 77 or 80 when you go to Living Rock Caverns. You can also get your Lava Flow Mining Suit here, which gives bonus mining XP and is very important and it will help you make the journey to 99 mining even faster. Up next is the Elder Kiln, you unlock the Fight Kiln, and you can get yourself a Tokar Cal or Brave the Fight Kiln in return for Onyxes, which have become devalued a lot lately, but it's always great to get that cape out of the way. And the next quest after that is Brink of Extinction, which is the following quest in the Tazar series, and this unlocks the Fight Cauldron, which is one of the best melee training or range or mage training spots in game, basically just combat training. You can also do these as a Slayer task for some really amazing combat XP. Up next is one of the kind, uh, what this one unlocks is Celestial Dragons as well as some very very generous XP, all of these Grandmaster quests typically give very good XP. Celestial Dragons, one of the best Slayer tasks in the game, amazing combat and Slayer XP, and many many charms. Up next is the World Awakes, um, 
to unlock automatons you do have to complete a lot of quest requirements so you won't get those right away if you haven't already completed ritual of the Majorette and some other quests before you do the world wakes but whether you've completed those or not you will get some ultimate abilities that are incredibly useful including death swiftness and sunshine the best ranged and mage ultimates respectively up next is fate of the gods which unlocks the muspa task a great task the anihil task not such a great slayer task and it also unlocks elder divination which is the best way to train divination up until level 85. Up next is Wild Guthic Sleeps. This unlocks Tormented Demons, which aren't necessarily as great bosses as they could be, but it also unlocks the ability to... Uh, well, once you've completed Wild Guthic Sleeps, you have almost all the requirements for Ritual of Madra, and you also get a ton of XP from beating this quest. About 400k XP in any skill of your choice. That's some good agility XP. And finally, we have Ritual of the Majorat, which the rewards from beating this quest are Glacers and a ton of XP. Glacers are, again, the best magic training spot in game, so getting this quest done is a huge accomplishment. As you might have been able to tell, during some of the slides I marked the quest requirements or the skill requirements as many just because there is far too many skill or quest requirements to put on the page. For example, Wild Gothic Sleeps requires 14 different quests and I can't exactly put those all on one slide. So if you need to do any of the quests or skill requirements, check out the link in the description and it'll be really easy to find exactly what you need to complete some of those quests that have a ton of requirements to do. But that is all for this video. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments. And as you guys can see, I've been having some absolutely great ratings on the videos lately. So thank you guys a lot for that and keep it coming. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video. Farewell.